Hello, and today I'd like to show you how to create a VDB volumes or VDB volumetric data. And I think everyone is familiar with the classic VDB from polygons. But I would like to show you, let's say, if you want to create a MT field or a environment where you want to fill the values inside. Because in this case, the values are already filled in or filled inside. So I won't explain anything here, but what I'll create is a VDB node which is going to allow us to create those uh, environments. So I'll call my uh, volume density and I can choose from multiple different uh, classes here. So stagger vector field is a type of vector field that's not the same as a, f a fog volume and a vector, f a vector float. It's a different type of uh, volume. And I think that's for another topic or another video because it's uh, more technically complicated. So I won't go deep into that. Then fog volume, I think that's the same thing as here. Then a level set is a SDF field and others are others. <laughs> uh, you can also choose a type here, like a float integer, vector, and so on. You can also choose a bit. I actually never really use 64, but maybe if your calculations should be very precise or you need precision, 64 bit might be useful. So you can set the voxel size here. And if, for example, I want to create a volume right now, let's set the voxel size to something like that. And I can create VDB activate. So the VDB activate allows me to activate those voxels. So essentially what I'm creating here is the attributes or the parameters for my volume. And here I want to create the uh, size of the bounding box or where I'm going to have activated voxels and so on. So let's say I can create a bounding box here. Let me actually place a volume slice, like so. I can see that I have values. Actually, let me change that to a fog volume so we have a better visualization. So as you can see, uh, we now created a box that's filled uh, uniformly with uh, voxels and has size five by five by five. We can move it and just like you would do with a box. So I'll set this to zero. Second type is using voxels. So in this case, let's say I can use 50 by 50 by 50. So the way this works, it essentially just counts how many voxels are in X, Y, and Z axes. Of course, I can set this to, for example, 25 here, the minimum to 25. So in this case, I have in X axis only 25 uh, voxels. You need to subtract those two values to get the amount of voxel voxels you get in each axis. So I'll set this back to zero. And also keep in mind, if I, for example, multiply this by two, my box gets four times more volume or in each direction, uh, twice as large. So I'll go back and I'll set this again back to zero. So I'll talk about the expand later. It's not particularly associated with the uh, creation of the volumes, but more like uh, adjusting the bounding boxes or the environment for the volumes. So then we have the reference. So for that, we need the region to activate. So that's why I have created the VDB from polygons here. And we're gonna select the, let me actually select a fog VDB, which is going to be an A. And uh, I created, or I changed the name to A so we can see that we're actually creating a new volume density that has the same bounding regions, as we can see. If I remove that, we're, we do not have anything. And now if I create a reference field, it already takes the uh, first volume. But of course, if you have multiple volumes, you need to specify it. And then for activating using VDBs, I get, again, a pickhead. But I can actually change the voxel size however I want. And I still get a pickhead, let's say by 10, and so on. You can see that I can create the same volume, or a volume which holds uh, the same data, but with different uh, parameters. So, uh, the activate volumes, I think I explained, and then the deactivate again. The deactivate I'll get into a second, and the fill SDF, um, again, I think that's if you want to fill a volume with uh, SDF values. So, I won't get into that because I, we don't have time, but what I want to also talk about here inside DVDB, that you have also different types of uh, options. This first, frustum, it's hard to uh, pronounce, but uh, essentially just creates more like a camera view 
I don't really know where I would use this realistically, but you can see it creates this kind of cone shape which represents the camera view. And here you can control the axis or how many uh, voxels there will be in the di direction. But I don't know where I would actually use this thing. But what I know where I would use is from camera. So here I have created a camera. If I look into the camera and I visualize my picket, we can see that uh, essentially what I get is a... Actually, let me set this to uh, like that. And now if I look in here, I can create from this particular camera. And let me let's set this to 25. I think that should be enough. So this is how far the uh, volume actually extends, if you see how far. And this is the padding. So I usually add a half a, uh, or this is essentially uh, five centimeters of padding. And you can increase the division. Or, and now if I if you look, I do get the pick head, but I essentially uh, only get the values that are inside the camera. If I actually lower the padding, or actually one zero zero, oh, my bad, uh, like so, we can see we're directly cutting it where the camera view ends. And this is useful for storing only the data which will be actually visible in the camera view. So this is a very useful thing. And I think that's regarding the uh, VDB everything. And what I would like to talk about is the VDB activate, uh, the other options I didn't cover. So in here, we can see that we have also the, the expand and the expand will essentially expand the voxels outside. So this is useful. For example, if I use a VDB smooth, Let's do like, uh, yeah, four iterations is all right. Let me do Gaussian. Let me maybe do 10 and five to get it more extreme. So right now you can see that it doesn't really look much really promising, but as I expand this, the different, the result changes. And the reason is because the blur tries to blur it out in all directions, but there's the bounds are too small for that. So what VDB activate, the expand option will do, it will essentially just expand the voxels outside. So you have room to actually blur them out. So that's why you would use VDB expand. After that, I can check the values in my slice. You can see that we're, bl we're blurring them out. And I can place a VDB activate again. And what I can do here is deactivate. So again, you can see that we can deactivate voxels that have under this value or uh, a value smaller than the deactivate tolerance. And this is useful because also in simulations, it's useful to deactivate, let's say, density smaller than 0 0.05 because that density has essentially almost no effect or it's not even visible at the end and still takes up memory and time to compute. So it's always good to deactivate some of the voxels it will optimize your scene more and yeah i think i covered most of the stuff so i hope you enjoyed and learned something new and i'll see you again bye